The issue about where do you get information is really important. Uh, what I've found in the 7,500 to 8,000 hours that I've studied this problem personally is that there was a lot of garbage information out there and you really have to do research and dig deep for original scientific papers. One of the organizations that I belong to is the Canadians opposed to fluoridation and cough cough as it's called is a national organization with a scientific body attached to it as an advisory board to vet the scientific material so that we can categorically state we've got the best pieces of evidence to prove our case. Isn't it a fact that every reputable medical and dental organization in North America favors fluoridation of water? That's a loaded question. Why don't you ask it? I am asking. <laughs> I am asking. Isn't it a fact? Isn't that a fact, doctor, that every medical and the Dental Association in North America is in favor of fluoridation of water. That is a fact, and I think you might also I add the World, it as a fact. The world I it Health a Organization fact. itself. Are there any proven cases where fluoridation has had an injurious effect, uh, effect on the health of people? There are certain individuals who attempt to make certain claims which have never been supported by any reputable scientific organization on this country. The original evidence that uh, was produced to show if effectiveness at preventing dental decay through the use of ingesting fluoride compounds was seriously flawed. Um, additionally, we have found that the original source data has been flawed, was flawed from the beginning, which means the decision to do so, to fluoridate, was also based in a flawed piece of science. And more importantly, it's been proven invalid. Dr. Sutton, Philip Sutton, was a pioneer in deconstructing the statistics of the day back in the late 50s and the early 60s to prove the statistical flaws in the methodology that was used so that the conclusions that were drawn at that time were not relevant to the, the purported claims. In the 1970s, Rudolf Zeigelbecker from Europe was the man who did a, a huge amount of work. He was a, a brilliant researcher and uh, what he did was to show mathematically how it was impossible for the claims of dental decay prevention to be offset by the increased rates of fluorosis in society. In other words, he's, he found two things. He found that the claims of dental decay prevention couldn't be proven, and he also found that the effects of too much fluoride ingestion, fluorosis, were exacerbated in the countries that were actively fluoridating their community water systems at the time. I must comment that Dr. Zeigelbecker did pioneering work and before his death, he was a very effectual man at getting many of the European countries to abandon or ban water fluoridation as a public health practice. This document here, or this study here, was produced by Dr. Zagelbecker in Europe, and he was the prominent individual who went around through Europe and said, look, we've gone back to the original studies and we've done a trace and we traced all of the, the, all of the levels of caries to the levels of fluoride in the water and we don't see a correlation. 1997 we voted to oppose fluoridation and our opposition has grown stronger as more adverse data on the practice has come in. In the interest of time, let me state our recommendations first. We ask that you order an independent review of the cancer bioassay of sodium fluoride mandated in 1977 by Congress. Evidence for carcinogenicity in that assay was systematically downgraded by a special executive branch commission appointed and run by the very agencies that Congress did not trust to run the uh, bioassay in the first place. That action saved fluoridation temporarily. We ask that you order chronic toxicity studies on the two waste products that are now used in 90% of fluoridation programs. EPA says there are at present no chronic toxicity data on them, and we ask that you order EPA set an MCL for fluoride that's truly protective 
of all American citizens, infants and adults alike, because the current one does not, in violation of the Safe Drinking Water Act. We ask that you order epidemiology studies using dental fluorosis as an index of exposure to determine the extent of other toxic effects, especially effects on the brain and bone in the population that are attributable to fluoride. The American people, and especially our children, are getting way too much fluoride. Two-thirds of children living in fluoridated communities have dental fluorosis in at least one tooth. Dental fluorosis is the visible manifestation of toxic overexposure to fluoride during their developmental years. The initial findings of the cancer bioassay were for clear evidence of carcinogenicity and that is consistent with several epidemiology and many mutagenesis studies. The protected pollutant status that fluoride enjoys within EPA and other federal establishments is remarkable as the charts over here show. And leading <clears throat> dental researchers are changing their views on the safety and efficacy of fluoridation. Doctors John Calhoun and Hardy Lineback, both former spokespersons for fluoridation, have published recantations of their former position. In, in Toronto, the guy called Lineback, who was one of the greatest um, supporters um, of fluoride in the water, he's the head of dentistry at Toronto University, he's come out now and said, for God's sake, don't have it, don't have it. And he, as he was saying, they've had it in the water for years, decades in Toronto. They don't have it in the water in Vancouver. There are fewer cavities by a mile per head of population in Vancouver than there are in Toronto. Hey, it's good for teeth. The other thing is that the products that go into water are supposed to be approved, and there's some approvals called NSF 60 and an AWWA standard, the American Water Works Association standard. None of these standards have done the health testing of this substance. If you were to write your supplier of this substance and demand the health test data, they cannot provide it. In fact, they will do everything to avoid giving it to you. Try it. Never, and this stuff has never been proven for the effect of prevention of tooth decay. There was a document that came out in 2006 which was produced by the National Research Council in the United States and it was freely about the fluoride compounds that we were using in water and their health effects and they found lots of effects. Obviously um, items related to toxicity. Here's the big document that I want to get to for you guys. This is the document that was produced by Peter, uh, Philip Sutton and it shows the errors and emissions that were done in the experimental trials on which Brantford's water was, uh, the decision for Brantford's water to be fluoridated was based. I take it for me that bell is the thing that tolls. It does toll for you, sir. <clears throat> Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation. The really big health effect by ingesting fluoridation chemicals or an excessive exposure to fluoride substances in the human body is fluorosis. And there are two kinds of fluorosis. The first is dental fluorosis and the second is skeletal fluorosis. Um, both manifest themselves in that the fluoride substances enter the body and accumulate in either tissue or structures of the, bone, of the body that are rich in calcium. The bones, the pineal gland, and uh, some of the tendinous tissues or the ligamentous tissues of the body. The problem is that the, um, the accumulated fluoride is not easily removed once it's embedded in the body. Now, when that happens, there are um, reactions within the body that are permanently uh, inhibited because fluorine and fluoride are enzymatic poisons and what that means is they inhibit the body's uh, use and production of enzymes for the beneficial purposes that the body makes those substances for. So when the fluoride inhibits these things the body obviously can't carry out those same functions as it once did. All right, you will know here where the uh, fluorine has just been introduced that there is a distinct stimulation of all the cells as they react to the poison. This we take to be a defense mechanism. Then it be things begin to slow up and reproduction is definitely inhibited.
Here we have another a demonstration of uh, the uh, destruction of cells by a perfusion of one part in 30 million. Notice the swelling of the mitochondria in the body of the cells. Notice the compaction of the uh, material in the center or vital spot which we call the nucleus of the cells. That too is evidence of injury. Note the swelling of the membranes around the cells. This makes it impossible for them to absorb foodstuff. Note they're shriveling up now. There are no cells dividing. All is becoming still. Most of the cells are dead or dying. This demonstrates the toxicity of this material. In summary, I wish to make it very clear again that this film, which you have just seen, is a graphic record of what we and Drs. Berry and Trillwood have seen in our cultures when they were perfused with dilute solutions of sodium fluoride. This film itself is presented here only to show that mammalian cells in tissue cultures can be and are damaged by fluorides, and some even killed when their contact with sodium fluoride is in the concentration of one part in 30 million. And we do have photographic records showing almost the same thing in one part in 60 million. Poisonous sodium fluoride in these concentrations may not be toxic enough to kill the cells or to destroy an organ or possibly the individual himself. Nevertheless, in human bodies, such poisons are subtle, insidious, and if prolonged over months and years, as in this case where fluoridated water is being used, chronic disorders and upsets of function in one or more of the vital organs may ensue. Another brilliant person, Declan Waugh, has produced a thick volume well over a couple of hundred pages of the incidences of chronic diseases comparing southern Ireland, northern Ireland, which is not fluoridated, and he has found overwhelming evidence that in at least 20 different chronic diseases that people face, that the rates in Southern Ireland, where it's heavily fluoridated, are much greater, in fact, up to 450 times greater than they are in Northern Ireland for the same kinds of chronic illness. Clinical medical studies had shown that a percentage of the population are intolerant to fluoride, and it could be anything between 1 and 5% of the population, so anything between 46,000 and 200,000 people in Ireland may be intolerant to fluoride. And the way that this may express itself with them is uh, neurological problems, cardiovascular problems, uh, dermatological problems, um, and uh, there were the three main areas that have been found in studies uh, in the United States and backed up recently by the only study that was ever done in Europe that I only found recently in Finland before, before and after they stopped fluoridating in 91. Um, remarkably they found the same thing that a percentage of the population are intolerant to fluoride and after three months after they stopped fluoridating in that city there was a 13% improvement in general health among the population in three months.